Hello friends, welcome to the third part of the best games of Paul Morphy series. In first two parts we saw that in 1857 Paul Morphy became the USA national chess champion and he played against all strong players in America but he dreamed big. He was dreaming against playing against top players of that era all over the world. And we know this thing that in 1840s there was one English player who was pretty strong and he was considered as the king of chess. His name was Staunton. So some of the friends of Morphy sent an invitation letter to Staunton to come to USA and play a match against Morphy. But Staunton declared, declined the offer. So Morphy decided to travel to England and offer a match against him. So he arrived in June 1858 in England and by the time he was waiting for Staunton's reply, he played one great game after another against all the local players and obviously he won against all of them. But he did one good thing. After his match against Lolenthal, he won a good prize money and he spent all the prize money buying the furniture for his opponent because he was in a little bit difficult condition. And the dream of playing against Staunton was trashed when Staunton declined to play against Morphy after a lot of discussion. So that is a little bit sad part. But he still gathered his courage and he played against all the great players of that era and he won great games. Our today's game is from one of the matches which he played against Henry Bird. Against Henry Bird he played 12 games and among those he won 10 games, 1 draw and 1 loss. Well, we will see this game without further delay. If you are not subscribed to my channel till now, do subscribe. We will be having great fun in our channel. So the game started with e4, then e5 was played, nf3, d6. This is the field door opening. Well, here white played d4. Usually in this position, black player plays e into d4 or maybe at some point knight to the d7. But Morphy was not going to stop at this position. He was a very creative and aggressive player. He decided to play f5 to open up the position on the king side. This is a little bit risky because we are opening up this diagonal and white had a chance to play bishop to the c4 to take control of this diagonal. Well, this is the way those players used to play. We cannot really blame them. Here, another try is to play d into e5 in this position, but black should be fine after f into e4 if knight g5 and d5 because the center will be controlled. Well, his opponent decided to play knight to the c3 in this position and after knight to the c3, he played f into e4. After f into e4, white played knight into e4 and then d5, attacking the knight on e4. Knight went back to the g3 square. Well, there are another, another possibility also of playing knight to the e5 in this position. That would have led to an interesting game because white is giving up the piece with d into e4. Well, we'll not go into the much details about the opening. So knight g3 was played and e4. Again, Morphe is pushing his pawns towards his opponent's pieces. And his opponent plays knight to the e5, putting the knight in the center of the board. That is always a good move. So Morphe decides to develop his knight to the knight to the f6. And his opponent also plays bishop to the g5, putting this bishop on this diagonal and pinning this knight on f6. Bishop e7 would have been a normal move, but Morphe played bishop to the d6 that was also one of the possibilities in the position and here Morphe's opponent who was Henry Bird played an interesting move. He played knight to the h5 attacking the pawn on g7 as well as attacking the pawn means knight on f6 and here Morphe played a very cool move. He just castled bringing the brick rook in the game plus supporting the pawn on g7 and also supporting the knight on f6. Here white played queen to the d2. Now Morphe understood that his opponent's knight on h5 is the key in this position and he needs to dislodge that knight from that square. So for that reason he played queen to the e8 attacking the knight on h5. Well normally the knight should capture the knight with knight f6 then after g into f6 maybe the position will be much more interesting if white plays bishop into f6 hoping that black might play rook into f6 then queen g5 check rook to the g6, knight into g6, h into g6 and queen to the d5. Well still black has two bishops and position is still quite unclear. But instead of playing rook into f6 in this position, black has the nice move that is e3. And after e3, 
the point is after queen into e3 rook into f6 queen to the g5 rook to the g6 this is the point that white cannot really capture the rook on g6 because there is a pin on this file so this was a fineness which was pointed out by kasparov in his book that is my great predecessors so his opponent played g4 in this position which was a little bit bad move because by playing g4 he is a little bit disturbing his own king side and that is not something which you should do he wants to put this knight here but he missed one tactic from morphy and morphy was very good in tactics he played knight into g4 and now this knight on h5 is hanging well white played knight into g4 and now queen into h5 appeared on the board so this knight is hanging so he played knight to the e5 hoping that the position should be stable in this position and his idea is to castle on the next move obviously if he needs to play something like bishop to the e2 dislodging this queen from this diagonal so meanwhile morphy understood that he needs to develop his pieces as quickly as possible so he plays knight to the c6 offering his opponent to capture the knight and double the pawns so his opponent was like first played bishop to the e2 once the queen went to the h3 square now he captured the knight on c6 and now he was a little bit happy because the pawns are doubled but you can see that even the pawns are doubled black has got a very important rook file because now rook will uh, come on the b8 square and he will be controlling the b file and one more thing you can see that white cannot really castle on the king side so his king is not good in the center of the board so at some point he needs to go to the queen side and even if he goes to the queen side the rook will be ready on the b8 square well here he played bishop to the e3 first and now black played rook to the b8 attacking the pawn on b2 and here white played long castle he did not see what is coming and morphy has prepared a deadly sacrifice in this position yes he prepared rook sacrifice well i will show you what he played and why he played very astonishing move that is rook into f2 he is giving up the rook but why well he is giving up the rook just for one thing we know this thing that th this rook on b8 was attacking the pawn on b2 but there were no other pieces which were there in the game okay bishop is there on d6 which can come to a3 but that will not damage white structure he needs a stronger piece he needs his queen in the game so to bring the queen in the game he is sacrificing the rook and after bishop into f2 morphy swing over his queen to the other side of the board with queen to the a3 now queen has joined the game and white cannot really capture the queen because after b into a3 rook bishop into a3 it will be a check and mate so obviously he did not capture there and he played c3 because another threat was to queen into b2 check and mate so here morphy just captured the pawn on a2 and now there are several threats we can even play bishop to the a3 at one point because b into the, let's suppose you play something around random move and after bishop to the a3 if you capture here then rook to the b1 is a check and mate so you need to be a little bit more careful another possibility is like if you can play queen to the c2 hoping that if queen a1 check comes you can play queen to the b1 but black again has a nice move with his bishop that is bishop to the f4 check and after this it is completely hopeless position because even after bishop to the e3 will capture here after rook to the d2 this position is completely lost for white so he did not go for that white played a nice move that is b4 and with b4 move he has stopped this rook's file this bishop is also not coming in the game and objectively speaking this game should have been drawn after queen to the a1 check king to the c2 queen a4 check and here white must play a good move that is king to the c1 and the best way morphy can do is like perpetual check and it should be a draw well he can play bishop to the b4 but that would be a little bit inaccurate because after this move rook into b4 white can play a good move queen to the g5 and now he is himself is threatening queen to the d8 check and black should be very careful he might play h6 but after queen to the d8 king to the h7 queen to the h3 maybe queen to the a2 but it, the game will be drawn after queen to the f5 king g8 queen c8 perpetual check and it will be a draw so in chess it is said that you cannot win the game just by yourself your opponent should also help you at some points and exactly that happened in this position after queen a4 check henry played king to the b2 allowing morphy to give it another sacrifice and open up white's king position and after bishop into b4 c into b4 rook into b4 you can see that 
in this position black is one rook and bishop down but white's king is completely like disastrous position and after this he must give up the queen because even if he plays king to the c3 it will lead to a checkmate after queen to the b3 so to save his king he played queen into b4 but now this position is almost gone for white after king to the c2 we can see that morphy wants his this bishop on c8 in the game and maybe he can play bishop to the f5 but white can play bishop to the e3 and this bishop will not join the games very soon so morphy was very clever first he played e3 opening up the diagonal for the bishop and after bishop into e3 bishop f5 check came and in this position his opponent played rook to the d3 and after queen to the c4 check king to the d2 queen a2 king to the d1 queen b1 was played and his opponent just resigned well for the sake of clarity we will see what is really happening after queen b1 we are actually attacking the rook on d3 with two pieces and if the king moves to the d2 obviously we will capture the rook on h1 and this is winning for us and let's suppose he plays bishop to the c1 then we will capture the d3 rook and after this we are again going to win the rook on h1 with queen f3 check and the h1 rook will fall even if the king moves to the e1 square we will still win the rook with queen to the e4 check and the rook will fall that's the why that's the reason his opponent just resigned so you can see that Morphy was so great player he played just like the modern day grandmasters which we see now he had a great sense of planning in chess he used to play with all his pieces and he understood the value of each and every piece so there is a lot to learn from these great masters stay tuned with, with me for the next games if you are not subscribed to my channel till now do subscribe we will be having great fun with learning so stay tuned Till then, take care and goodbye. Thank you once again.